Amen. The Lord is having a supper. You are all invited today to his table. Today, Jesus gives you his body to eat and his blood to drink for the remission of all your sins. You eat and drink salvation. Everything he earned for you by his perfect life, he delivers to you into your mouth. Everything he paid for by his suffering and death, he gives to you into you today. Everyone is invited, everyone, not just some people, not just holy people, even we sinners are invited, all, no one is left out. So he sends the servants out, come, everything is ready. Then the RSVPs come in from his people, I'd love to come, but I have bought a field, please excuse me. Can't make it. I just got five brand spanking new genuine 8032 pairs of oxen, and I want to test drive these bad boys. Another came in, I have married a girl, honeymoon, you know. All these answers end the same. The invitation, his invitation, is rejected. He is rejected. Something ranked higher than the feast. Something meant more, was more important, needed more attention from them. Today, Jesus speaks this parable against the children of Israel who just wanted something more than him. They went their own way. They rejected the Father and his Messiah, his Christ. Jesus wasn't enough for them. They had better things to do. But let's not just condemn the children of Israel. Let's look at ourselves. We are entrusted with the gospel of Christ. We know that God's love is seen in his giving up of his son for our salvation. Salvation is not by what we do or don't do, but solely in the cross of Christ. And faith receives that salvation in his gifts and his word that we are saved. But there it is, God's word. We tune it out. We shut down during the sermons, if we can hear it at all, contemplating other things. We don't want these sermons to be too long. They have to fit within our schedule. Our phones are more exciting. Did you remember to shut them off before church? The latest buzz, that notification from the internet, or maybe it's the buzz of gossip around the church. We're thinking about the brunch we have lined up later, or trying to remember not to forget to call Dad on this Father's Day. Or perhaps we have repairs around the farm that we've neglected, and they're on our mind. But the Lord will not suffer himself to be second in your world. He won't suffer himself to be second to anything. He won't compete for your attention. He's either important to you or he isn't. And if he's in the second spot, he considers it simply an RSVP in the negative. The next time you have something better to do than to come to the services in God's house, contemplate that the Lord Jesus has given you your entire body, soul, and indeed your entire being, 168 hours a week. He asks of you only one of those hours, a little bit more, and you can't even give him that. One hour out of 168 is too much for you. Do you have something that ranks higher, more important, something? What do you think is more than his word? So what does he do? He sends out his servants. Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. There he is inviting you again. His people reject him, and he goes out and sends out invites again. He brings you to his table. He forgives you. He has mercy we are the poor, the crippled, and the blind, and the lame in this parable. We are the ones who get the invitation after his own people rejected him. The Gentiles, if you like. And Christ himself takes upon himself our poverty. He takes our infirmities on himself. He enlightens us. He heals us. By his holy life, he, the holy of lives, makes us holy. By his suffering, his bitter suffering and death, he redeems us, buys us back from our sins, even from our rejection and despising of his word. 
And he goes out to the waysides and the roadside, even to two miles out of town, Sherman Center, or throughout the county of Sheboygan, and drags us back. The Greek word says he compels them to come in. Like a father who takes away a dangerous thing from his child, he compels us out of our sin and then gives to us, even us who are focused on everything but him, he gives to us eternal life again. Dear friends, the Lord's gifts, his word, his baptism, and his supper aren't just a little part of your lives. It's more than just an hour plus each week. Nor is it something you do to meet people or to hear something positive about yourself, an inspirational message. No, the gifts are for faith. Faith flows from the gifts received here. Faith receives Christ's life and cross in his word and sacraments where he promised. Faith lives from the water and the word in the baptismal font, lives from the word of God, lives from the bread and wine, which is the very body and blood of Christ. After all, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Each day you are raised up again, raised in his gifts and enlightened again to live a life for someone else other than yourself. You are given to be Christ for others, giving your life for their life. So leave behind where you think your life is, the ups and downs of what is here today and gone tomorrow. Yes, your new field is important. Your new pair of oxen can be tested out tomorrow. Your bride is important too, but why don't you take her to the banquet as well? So come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of understanding. That word of wisdom that we heard today was given by Solomon to his son. The chief responsibility of fathers is to teach his children God's word. And then all the other gifts that fathers give follow. And the thanks we give for fathers today then is for them heeding the charge of the scriptures and is also the charge echoed in our small catechism. Wie sie ein Hausvater seinem Haus ein Feltig for Halton Zoll. Some of you remember that, maybe. Or if you prefer, as the fathers of the house should teach it in a simple way to his household. The Hausvater teaches his children God's word. All earthly gifts come and go, but God's word endures forever. And that gift from our fathers also then lasts forever. Teach your children what is important, your grandchildren too, by word and example, by how you spend your time, not just in front of the television or computer, but in the Lord's words, praying, praising God, and giving thanks for what he has done for you in Christ. What better gift could you give them? For in a thousand million years from now, as you feast on the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom that has no end, whatever it is that you thought was more important this day, I promise you won't be. It simply won't be as important to you as what your Lord Jesus did to save you and those to whom you delivered his word. All that will matter, all that matters now is the cross of Christ. His death for you made right with God. His life is your life now and forever. So today the Lord is having his supper and here's the gospel. You are invited. Come and taste the bread of God. Come and receive his life and salvation. Come and eat and drink for the forgiveness of your sins, because blessed is everyone who eats the bread of God. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.